Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Got another budget-friendly lithium iron phosphate battery for you today, this time from Yolik. If you're thinking this battery looks unique, you would be correct, but there's more than meets the eye with this unit. If you're looking for the full test here in our interview on this Yolik 100 amp hour battery, you found the right video. Let's get right into it. Two things about the battery off the start I don't like. To use their app, you have to register your email account, get a password sent to you, and all that. I don't like having to do that registration, but that's why I keep some throwaway email accounts. I don't get spammed. I use them for situations like this. So I registered to the YoLeak app so I could get the Bluetooth monitoring. So then I take my tablet to where the battery's located with no internet connection. So you try to connect to the battery, it won't let you connect without internet. You have to have Wi-Fi or a hotspot on or something like that for the battery to work. So that's a big strike right there. Not being able to monitor the battery without internet connections. A lot of people that use these batteries are in remote locations, camping, things like that with no signal. So, uh, you know, that's kind of a bummer. So now I'm going to top off the battery one more time before the capacity run. Here we go. So the app is still reading in offline mode with no network connection. While the battery's topping off, the app does have cell voltages and things like that. So take a look at the cell voltages as if we can with the little flashing icon going across to everything. Go back to the dashboard until we complete charging. All right, we stopped a little bit below 14.6 total pack voltage. So if we see if we got a high cell right here. Yeah, we got, it looks like we had a cell spike up and go off on a cell over voltage instead of letting the pack get up to 14.6. So, you know, there is that. Looks like it's probably cell number three right there. So did it give us any alerts about that? Uh, just full charge state. Now, I don't see a high cell voltage strip or anything like that. So one cell triggered the protection and then it says the pack is full. And making note on this style terminal, there's not as large of a contact patch between your battery cable and the actual terminal of the battery. That's the standard size of most of your other batteries, 99% of them out there, your contact patch that your actual battery lead can connect to. So kind of give you a little comparison right there. A lot smaller, a lot less contact with the finished lug on the cable. So I have to see if this builds up any heat during the capacity test. So I got the Yolik battery connected to the capacity test rig, the same setup I always use, a little energy monitoring shunt, the alpha inverter, no energy has moved through the battery. So now I'll turn the inverter on and now I will apply the load. It is that same charger to charge this battery, charging back to another battery. So here we go. And the battery temperature at the start of the test, indicating 78 degrees Fahrenheit by the Bluetooth data. And there are some cell voltages right there for your reference. And there's our BMS temperature right there. We have cell temperatures right here, pack pole temperature right there. That's interesting. And then this battery does have self heating. So, you know, we're not doing any self heating right now, but it's going to show that too. And the voltage on this battery will plummet it down below 13 volts pretty quick. Let's see what this one does. I'm, I'm curious if it's going to make a hundred amp hours. Well, wouldn't you know it, as soon as I go work on something else, come back and check on the status of the battery capacity pool, I come back in here and nothing is on. So the BMS output is off. Uh, didn't get very far into it, apparently. So uh, see what the battery is faulted out on. So we'll go back over to the detail page right here. Uh, output voltage 0.6 for volt. Yeah, that's accurate. Now, why did we do that? Battery protection state, short protect state. So it's not liking something over here, uh, I guess, or super sensitive BMS, or maybe something tripped a little short inside the battery, something like that, maybe. Go back to the dashboard right here. Go back up here, fault, no four start. So what's a four start? Do on this one. Uh, disconnect electrical devices. Perform for start. Nothing. Now there we went. Come back up after a minute. Now it's on standby. So okay. So initially I pre-charged the inverter before I closed the breaker. But uh, watch this. 
Oh, got it again, didn't it? Oh, what is that? The current device to trigger short circuit protection. So there are five minutes. <laughs> so yeah, you got to use the pre-charge resistor on that BMS, which I always usually do. I just want to see what it would do when it tried to fill the capacitor bank up in that. So, all right, there we go again. So while waiting on this battery to come back online again, since I intentionally tripped at that time, listen. Can you hear that? It's not like there's a fan running inside there. Has it got a fan-cooled BMS? That's interesting. We'll find out shortly. Still waiting. Uh, rest assured, there's nothing wrong with this inverter. I just ran it on another battery before connecting this one. Had no problems whatsoever. So we got some kind of sensitivity issue with the BMS in this uh, battery right here. I can guarantee you 100% certainty nothing's wrong with the inverter or the setup. I was going to wait for it to time out again. I'm just going to hit it with a jump start right there. That should clear out the fault on the battery right here. So let's see if that got it. Yes, battery fault code zero. So a little jump start. We're ready to go again. All right, so I tried to fill the inverter up. Got my voltage up right here. Closed the breaker after everything was full and got another short circuit trip. So I gave it another jump start connected to the BMS just for like two seconds so it shouldn't skew our capacity. Uh, got it back online now. So some, that BMS is, is way, 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 way sensitive to do any kind of real work. Um, so, you know, just trying to fill the capacitors up in that, it puts a short circuit fault into it. But anyhow, back to the capacity run, if we can get it to finish a capacity run. So here goes the load again, turn it back on and here we go all right there we are 50 right back 54 amps again and then a few moments later it trips again another quick jump start and well let's try it again all right coming up on the estimated halfway capacity mark on the yo leak right there just crossed it at 640 watt hours 12.79 volts indicated there and then the bluetooth is indicating 50 percent remaining well, we're gonna get real close on the yo leak oh nope just missed it we just shut down didn't quite make the 1280 mark on the yo leak so what happened right here the current device has triggered discharge protection over discharge protection so the battery bms shut down on the yo leak so it went off on over discharge state right there and yet another jump start on this Yolik battery to get everything powered back up. 1,278 watt hours, just a touch shy of the rated 1,280. First one in a long time that has done that. And then the release condition is right at 12 volts. I missed it on camera, but you get it up to 12 volts and that will release the over discharge protection. This battery, what's unique about it? Well, it's got carry handles down the long side of the battery instead of the short side, like most of your other batteries. It's got top post terminals, threaded top post terminals, a little bit unique uh, in the lithium iron phosphate category. At least, you know, 99% of them have standard terminals, but this one's a little unique. It's got a little breather vent right there on the top, and it's got a user interface switch right here to activate or deactivate the battery, energize heating, shut the battery down, things like that. So a little bit different in its size. Well, it's bigger than a group 31 size format battery. It's a little bit wider. The length and the height's pretty close, but the width is about two inches bigger. And here's a standard group 31 for comparison, side by side. So you can see the length is very close, but you can see the Yolik is wider. Then there is a width comparison. You see the Yolik is a little bit wider in height. Well, considering the top post, about the same height. Now, if it didn't have the top post had flat terminals, it'd be just a little shorter than a standard group 31 format. What comes with the battery? Well, you get a set of their terminal bolts right there, their socket cap style Allen heads, and then you get a little user manual and their Bluetooth and app. There's a spec sheet on the side right there. It's got your data on the side of the battery with a sticker. You can see the lid is held down with some Allen, some socket cap screws right there, holding that down. Uh, the terminal's on top. You know, that's that's unique. I don't know if I like that or not. I'm gonna just open up the battery and take a look at it. Uh, I don't know if this is gonna get the full treatment or not since it's already failed a capacity test. 
I mainly want to open it up and see if there's any safety issues. I may check some other things in there while I'm inside if I find anything interesting, but uh, wonky acting BMS and failed capacity and terrible Bluetooth app. It's got so many marks against it already. So the lid is most of the way off the battery. I saved the last little bit of glue for you so we can look at this battery at the same time together. There are the machine screws that were holding down the lid. You can see they got some thread locker right there on them. And then there is a band of sealant underneath the lid. So let's see what it looks like. Okay, that's interesting. All right, all of the glue is off now. Looks like we got braided connectors right there instead of regular wiring. That's unique for this size battery. Haven't seen that before. Uh, looks pretty clean on the top. Initial impressions. We got a steel plate right there separating the BMS from the cells. And there's the little little fan you heard running in that earlier clip. So I was not mistaken thinking I was hearing a fan running. Let me break some of this loose so I can take the lid off and look a little closer. And that's unique on the terminals for the battery right here. Those are temperature sensors strapped up against the positive and negative so it can monitor temperature of the actual leads going out of the battery. Got a can high and can low port on the top right here going to those two points right there. And here is the BMS. Here's some data for you right here. It's a Eureka BMS 12 volt 4S. So right there, some information 2024 date. And we'll see a positive lead coming up to the board and then another lead going down. This is for the self-heating right here. That's supposed to have a self-heating mat underneath. So you can see some of the you know, way the board is designed and built. Uh, very sensitive board. Uh, I don't really care much for it, even though it looks pretty nice. And notice right here on this sticker, it looks like a 2024 production date for the battery itself. It was wrapped around this heating lead right here. So it is uh, now August of 2025. So this battery is almost a year old already so there is where the bms is mounted on this steel plate that is a very thick very heavy steel plate now why they needed that so thick and heavy to hold that little bms right there i don't understand unless it was to add weight to make the battery feel like it's a lot heavier than what it is something like that but i think that is uh ridiculously overkill just to uh, support that board right there so you know, just share my thoughts on that i that could have been aluminum or something different. Save a lot of weight on that battery because that's that's a good pound, pound and a half right there just in that steel plate. So here's a view of the cell assembly. You can see all the leads I have removed to get down to this point in the battery. And we got some push pins holding this plastic cover on. So there we go the top of the pack. It is a modular cell group. So it's got the modular case around the actual cells and they got an aluminum enclosure around the side of that so there's you a quick view right now and let me go down a little further see what else we can find actual modular assembly production date 10 14 2024 the sensors it's got two ntc temperature sensors so they are soldered on to the bus bars right here the bus bars have expansion humps in them that's always good to see but we have Two sensors, now getting one off to check everything with all this mess, trying to work with all this mess. I don't know if we can be able to do that or not. So on the side of the modular assembly, they have an aluminum grid right there on both sides. So they've got the aluminum grid bolted down and that's what's holding the whole cell assembly into this plastic case right here. So, you know, pretty interesting to see that. They got some foam right there between the aluminum and the actual cell group. And they're nice and snug, you know, should be pretty immune to damage. So here's the QR code right there on the cell. I'm not going any further with any testing on this battery. I've seen all I need to see on this battery. Uh, let me start on stuff I don't like. Of course, I don't like the BMS, the way it functions, and it's super sensitive. Didn't want to run that charger, and then it started to run the charger just fine. I don't know what's up with that, uh, how they got it set up or programmed. It's threshold. You can't see any of that through the Bluetooth. Oh, yeah, and the Bluetooth, you got to register an account. you got to have internet and all that. You saw me use it without internet, but if you disconnect, you have to go find internet again with the battery to connect back 
connect to it. Then you can lose your connection, but it'll still work. So no, I don't like that either. And then this BMS right here, it reminds me of a BMS. I have a portable power station more than it does a, you know, standard 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. And that's probably not a good thing. And then having to have a fan. So a point of failure right here. So if your battery, you know, over time, this little fan can fail, get some overheating, things like that. Moving parts on a 100 amp BMS. I mean, pristinely built, looks good, nice and neat pack. Uh, but the sales with the data missing, it's usually a red flag for me. And then the production date of the pack, we're almost a year old now. So you've got some calendar aging on the sales. Every other budget battery within the last year or so has usually given me a bonus of between two and 5% overage. Uh, there are other options out there that you can get well over 100 amp hours for the same price as this battery. Which of course, this battery does have a self-heating functionality on it, which, you know, is kind of a unique feature in this price point range. But uh, to activate it, you got to go through and push this switch like three times to activate the heating and all this different stuff. And then these terminals, uh, I don't really like those terminals for a battery that's not rated for starting or automotive. It's not dual purpose. It's not rated for any of that, but they put automotive style top posts on there. To me, that is just a, uh, a place where you could have a bigger boo-boo instead of just standard terminals like right here, you know, a lot less likely to contact something there. And if you got your wires here, you still have nothing to cover that and you can have a short circuit uh, quite easily with these large exposed top posts. And the larger space is just icing on the cake. It takes up a lot of room for a 100 amp hour battery. So, you know, there's my thoughts on it. What do you think about it? Let me know in the comment section down below what you think about this battery. Am I giving it uh, too rough of a go or am I being you know, fair with it? I think I'm being fair with it. I just think for your money, there are so many better things out there for you to choose from. I'll actually include this battery plus some of those other options that I think are good batteries in the video description down below with some videos so you can compare you know, this battery versus some other ones. Any other question or anything about this battery, please put it in the comment section. I'll answer to the best of my abilities. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Y'all take care. Be safe. I will see you on the next one. Special thanks to Yolik for providing this battery sample for today's video so I can test and demonstrate your battery's capabilities. Thank you.